Keeping a junk journal is deeply satisfying. We all do it differently and that's a good thing. Sometimes it helps to get a few ideas to inspire us, to see what others do and to learn a few new tips and techniques. So in this video I'm sharing my process for filling a page in one of these journals so that you can be inspired to play with paper and happily fill a page or two of your own. And if you're here because you have that passion for paper and you simply love junk journals, then hit the subscribe button and ring that little notification bell. I have lots more videos and ideas to come. I've chosen this slightly larger journal to work in today. And as you can see, the pages have got quite a lot of contrast. I've picked music paper. I've picked old encyclopedia pages. I've got some art history books and some scrapbook paper and a little bit of botanical paper there. Just choose a page that gives you inspiration, that motivates you to want to fill it, that makes you raring to go to play with your paper. In terms of supplies that I'm using today, I'm raiding my stores of books that I've bought in local charity shops. This is a particularly beautiful one that I just wanted to share with you today. I mean, just look at the beautiful flowers on the page. This book is just stuffed full of gorgeous pages that I'm going to be able to use in a junk journal. So I've got gorgeous greens and purples on this page, some different bracken and different foliages on this page. It's just incredible what you can find in local charity stores. So my tip would be definitely have a look and see what you can find. And I love to use botanical books. This is another one that I'll be using later in the year. It's got slightly white paper, whiter paper there, but incredibly useful. Uh, and this herb book is the one that I'm going to be using today. So there's no real science about this, I just picked a page that I liked and I've decided I'm just going to put it on the left hand side here to make life a bit more interesting and a bit more rough looking to the eye I'm just taking the right hand side off, I'm just tearing down that side to give it a rougher edge. I'm sticking it in with a liquid glue. You could use a stick of glue. My tip would be if you are using liquid glue like this, then just be very sparing with it so that it doesn't make it too wet when you stick the picture in. So I'm just positioning that on the left hand side. running my finger over the edges just to make sure that they're totally flattened down. And a tip from me would be to add text to your images and to your pages and I quite like to do that just with a pen and handwriting so here I'm just adding a little bit of text. In this case it's the name of the plant. And don't worry if your handwriting isn't the best, it, it will look good. The combination of text on pages like this just seems to work, so my tip would be just have a go. I want to add something extra to this page, so I've just pulled a few items from my stash again. And here I have a piece of K and Co paper from one of my larger paper stacks. The images on it are stamps, so I'm just cutting one off with a pair of scissors that has a serrated edge just to give a little bit of interest. And although those stamps all look very similar, those icons, those images all look very similar colours, actually one of them has a little bit more of a purple shade to it and that will go with the pansy in the picture. So I'm just being mindful of bringing together the things on a page that wrap around a colour palette and I try to stick to about three main colours in my colour palette. This little embellishment seems to work best at a jaunty angle rather than just square on the page so here I'm just fixing it with glue again on the bottom left. So now we've got a basic page layout, I pull my little stash of paper pieces and see what I can add as another embellishment. I'm trying to find colours that match 
or at least augment the petals in the flower. Some of these little pieces of paper and the purples seem to work better than others. So I'm just choosing one of the pieces that seems to work the best. At this stage, I can't resist using some of my washi tape. So I'm just adding a little piece of this black and white spotty washi tape and a piece of this little gold glittery washi tape. The benefit of making your own banner, as I am doing here, is that you can choose from your scraps of paper a colour that really matches the page. I also really like to try to make my own embellishments rather than necessarily go out and buy them. I have got a couple of videos on how to save money when you're crafting, so have a look at those if they interest you. One of my tips for making a banner really work on a page is to put faux stitching around it. So here I'm just adding a really simple faux stitching of dashed lines in the black pen. And if you wanted to, you could put some faux stitching around the flower, around the main picture as a whole, and that would really make it pop as well. I just felt the page needed a bit of something extra, so here I'm adding a few sequins, which I pull off this roll. They're in a dark grey metallic sort of colour and I'm just attaching them with the same glue. So my glue has a very multi-purpose use. I just use the same glue for pretty much everything in my junk journaling. One tip when you're adding extra little embellishments like these sequins is to position in odd numbers. So I often put groups of three on the page together like we've got here in the top left. And yes, I should be using tweezers to do this. It would have been an awful lot easier, but I just couldn't find them at this point. And I wanted to add something on the right hand side, also with a little bit of that lilac showing through. So I found this tiny little pocket that's embellished again with those purple colors. And I'm just gluing it on the right hand side here. If you want to see how to make up these little pockets, and I do use another one and stick it on the inside back cover later on, then I do have a video on that and I will link it in the description box down below. They're actually incredibly easy to make and an awful lot of fun, so I would encourage you to try that out if you haven't already done so. I have this plastic pouch full of images that I've stamped onto various book pages and scrapbook pages and I've painted some of them and they're just really handy to have when you want to fill a page or do some decorating. So I'm just having a bit of a rummage and seeing if I can find something that I want to use. And I find a little doodle that goes on the side for later use. So my tip here is, see if you can build up a little collection of your ephemera and embellishments uh, and just have those handy because it makes life a lot more fun and easier when you're coming to put together a page in a junk journal. And I like this image of the daffodils that I've stamped and painted but it's not on a piece of paper that's the right size so all I'm doing is having a go at folding it in a few different ways and by trial and error I decide on a particular fold that's how I choose to stick it in. I like to decorate my journals just choosing a particular page to have a go at and I don't start at the beginning and work from front to back so a tip that I have is just open the page and find the one that motivates you and, and that's how you'll probably get the most enjoyment out of your junk journaling. So I stick in the little bunch of daffodils and it just gives a bit of interest it's another fold out within a fold out I've been making batches of these little envelopes they're made from old book pages and I'm just choosing one that will work in this journal thinking about the colors thinking about the images just choosing something that will go on that right hand page I sat in my craft room the other day and made a whole stack of them. They're just a way of using up some of your scraps of vintage paper, your stamps and maybe painting on them. It's a lot of fun. So I'm just clipping one in on the right hand side with a paper clip. And that will get filled a little later with some little pieces of paper in a complementary colour. And here I'm just using another of those pockets that I've already made and sticking it into the back cover with the same glue. It's made with a page from a book about stamps, so there's some really interesting images on it. 
Again, I've used paper that's got a little hint of the lilac and blue about it. And that's just going into the back cover there. And now for the part that I'm really excited about because we have a go at drawing that cute little cactus plant. I'm just using a really small piece of scrapbook paper and to keep a little supply of these squares on the side. There's just a few basic steps to drawing this cactus plant, so let's have a go. First of all, we draw the pot and then I draw six quite pointy leaves. All different sizes. Behind those six leaves, I just add four more. And now we have our basic plant. I just add these little zebra lines to each leaf. You see, it's really very easy. I draw a few lines on the pot. I think there are five of them here. And the part that I really enjoy is adding some colour to the leaves with my palette of watercolour paints and their white nights. And really I'm just playing around with the yellow and the green to come up with a shade that I like. And then I use a couple of different shades of brown on the pot. And I just put a few little squiggles of brown underneath the pot to finish off. And here we have our cactus doodle. I've decided to make a little pocket out of it. On the inside of this fold out. So I just put some glue along two sides of the paper. And finally, I'm just tearing up a little piece of lilac paper here to draw on to put inside this envelope. And these would be great for writing a few lists or for sitting on your sofa and just grabbing a few memories, a few thoughts from the day. So the plain pieces of paper go in the envelope and I add a doodle picture as well. And I'm feeling quite good about this one so far. But let me know what you think. Drop me a comment down below. I would love to know about your current junk journal projects and also if you have a go at the doodle. So do let me know about that. And in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this, then hit that subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and I will see you next week for more paper passion and more fun. Bye.